Happy, congratulations. Thank you. What, what was that, what was being a part of that game like and just seeing how everything kind of unfolded, especially there at the end? Yeah, um, I don't know, I was warming up and I had no idea that we were about to tie it right there. I just figured it was my job to keep the lead safe until our bastard get going. And, you know, I don't think that anybody that's ever followed the game of baseball, it could be happier with how that one ended for us, especially with Brousseau getting a little revenge after he got almost got decapitated. Hey, what, did, what did you guys think when you were kind of briefed on this plan of how the pitching was going to work and that the, the high leverage relievers were going to kind of get through the middle inning? Well, I figured that we were all going to throw. I don't think that Cash could have asked for it to go any better. You know, to get Glass into the third, Nick to the fifth, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think that uh, that Cash really could have asked for much more out of uh, the bullpen. You know, that's been one of the things that we've prided ourselves on as a group is just going out there and doing our job whenever it's called upon. So we all knew we were going to throw and we were ready to go. And the, the earliness, the innings didn't throw anybody like Nick in the third and you when you came in and any of that? Um, no, I, I mean, we don't. We're trying to we're trying to advance. You know, we don't really care when, where. I'll throw till my arm falls off. Nick will throw till his arm falls off. Diego will throw till his arm falls off. We're trying to win, you know? So the, the gate to the stable was working today? The gates were open, Mark. They were they were open and the horses were running. Hey, and, and we asked you this at the beginning of the series, but you think they'll get your names right now that you guys have beaten the New York Yankees? Well, I mean, we did beat their golden child, so I hope ESPN does. I know they cater to all the big boys. So, um, yeah, I hope so. We'll see. Time will tell. Hey, Pete, Pete, just to make sure, who, who is their golden child? You mean Chapman or Cole? Uh, no, I mean, like, no, the big markets in general. Oh, Chapman. ESPN's golden child. Yes, yeah, ESPN, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. People okay. that have all, the cities that have all the people in them. Yeah. Not the ones that are small. <laughs> be good. Those two. Yes, thank you. Pete, how, how much do the Rays enjoy that idea that, you know, maybe other people want the Yankees or the National League, they want these other teams, but you guys are the ones who crash the party and, you know, just show up and do your thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, after last year, we kind of, I felt like, you know, as a unit, we kind of said, all right, well, we're on the brink. So we might as well, uh, we might as well ruin their day up there in Connecticut. So we're fine with it. We love it. You know, we're a good ball club and we're trying to go out there and win no matter how big the market is that the team we're playing across is made up. Is there a common theme with the Rays with guys like, uh, I mean, we saw Brasso undrafted, you were traded, Nick Anderson was traded, guys come over there and they do great. What's the common theme with you guys? Um, on the pitching side, uh, Kyle Snyder, Stan, Knapp, Winston, just everybody, you know, and just finding things that people are good at that other clubs are undervaluing and turning that in and realizing that, okay, well, they all do this really well. Let's let them go do that really well and see how the ships fall. Thank you. Anything else for Pete? Yeah, Pete, you got another big market in uh, Houston to deal with next series. Just to curious your initial thoughts of the Astros test and potentially seven and seven for you and the staff. Yeah, I mean, they're a good ball club. Uh, we saw that last year. And I don't think it really matters that their, their two biggest guns are gone. I'm sure that they have just as many guys that they're about to run out there against us. I mean, we're ready to go and we're excited for, uh, is it Sunday shoots? Yeah, we're excited for Sunday. Hey Pete, when, uh, did you guys talk at all as far as this scenario, even before the playoffs started, like, hey, what if this game ends the way it did with the revenge factor against Chapman? You know, I had not even thought of it. Um, but, I mean, it is what it is. The field, the, uh, the baseball gods answered that one. So, I mean, you, were, you watched it. I watched it. Sheets watched it. You know, the game took care of itself on the field how it's supposed to. Pete, just to follow up on the potential for seven games in seven days, is there anything that happened in this series, five and five, that you guys picked up on, talked about, that you feel prepared you better for uh, the test that could come in the CS? Um, 
I mean, I'm just going to take more leave this series, I think. I don't really uh, – you know, it's a lot of games and a lot of days. It's kind of how the regular season went this year. So, you know, we're all going to – going to show up and do our part whenever we're called on like we have been for a 60 game set that has felt a lot longer than that. Anything else for Pete or am I mercifully spared from him? Hey, hey Pete. Um, <laughs> I uh, wish you could hear me. Can you hear me? I was laughing at Sheets because he was oh, trying to get me out of here. All good, all good. Um, I heard that uh, they're playing uh, New York, New York from Sinatra, Empire State of Mind. Uh, from Jay-Z in the field, uh, you all send the message? I mean, I'm not the one responsible for it. I prefer happier music than Frank Sinatra. That song is kind of gets on my nerves, for being honest. <laughs>